Thank you all for sticking around. Uh, my name is Janet Trader. I am a scholar in residence here at The Pillow, and I am thrilled to be in conversation with the co-artistic directors of Music from the Soul, Gregory Richardson and Leonardo Sandoval. What an incredible show, you guys. <laughs> Thank you so much. I, I have a handful of questions, is how this will go. I have a handful of questions that I will ask Leo and Greg, and then at the end, time permitting, we'll open it up for questions from the audience. Um, so the first question that I have, actually, Greg, there was an interview um, in which you said that Music From The Soul is kind of like a band and kind of like a dance company. And I wondered if you could say a little bit more about what, what you mean by that and how this group functions kind of in both ways. Um, sure. Yeah, I say that uh, you know, well, like we were having this discussion yesterday, and we we're saying that uh, to be clear, it's not that it, we're, we're not it, every tap dance company. Well, not every tap dance company. We're not the we're not like the only tap dance company with a band. It's not like some brand new idea or anything. But um, we do try to foster as much connection between the band members and the dancers as possible, and try and think of new ways to do it. We, try and play with like different staging and stuff so that we're not at the back. Um, try to get the musicians to use their bodies a little bit, the musicians, the band members to use their bodies a little bit more. That's another thing, like we try to not call musicians and dancers. Like right. we are all performers. Yeah, or like band, band members and dancers, or yeah, because we're all musicians. Um, and we'd like to be able to like be maybe versatile in venue too, so that we could, you know, go to a, a music venue and kind of like shock people or go to a dance venue and kind of give people a surprise also. So just the, just the idea that we're, we're kind of trying to push the whole ensemble equally as performers and not to, not to be like dancers with like a background band, you know? Thank you. Leo, did you want to add something? That was perfect. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm gonna, I'll direct the next one to you, Leo, but, I, but Greg, I hope you'll also kind of weigh in on this one. The, what the band members and the dancers are performing, we, you know, we see that tap dance is maybe the, the central movement vocabulary, but there are so many other sort of stylistic genres and influences. And so, but the same is true for the music, right? So I was wondering if first you could, you know, name like what are the other genres that are kind of coming into the, to the material and and then also talk a little bit about the process of bringing them into dialogue with tap dance. Sure, um, all the dances that we're doing on the stage come from the African diasporic um, side, either American or Brazilian, Afro-Brazilian or African-American dance styles. Uh, we are obvi obviously doing tap dance. We do a lot of body percussion. The musicians do a lot of body percussion. Uh, we do this dance style called samba hockey, if I say with a Brazilian accent, which is just a mix of samba and rock and roll. It's the part in dancing that you see we dancing. Uh, we do a little bit of, a little no, a lot of um, Orisha dancings, which is a religion kind of perform performative dance. Um, and just general samba, like street dance samba, in mix with that other like couples dance number that we do. Um, to put all those things together, it wasn't just on my mind. Um, I rely a lot on the dancers, uh, and especially for, for those two, uh, for this one specific choreography where we do the partnering dancing and then we go to the Orisha dancings, uh, Lucas Santana, who was dancing, partnering dancing with me, and Giselle Silva, who was doing the Orisha uh, quiet dancing with me, they both like co-choreographed all those parts with me. Lucas is actually a ballroom dancer as well. Uh, he has a background on ballroom dancing, so we basically like improvised together and filmed and like just took whatever we, we were like happy with the steps that we are improvising from the videos. Uh, actually, an insight from that, that song, the partnering dancing that I have with, with Lucas and Giselle is having with Anna, uh, is something that we've been trying to put on the show for a while, uh, but never ever actually really worked because we were missing something. Like the first residency that we did, we didn't have all the instruments to make the song feel like it should be. I was pushing to Greg and I was like, uh-uh, no, no, no. Second time, we have the band, but not the bodies to actually do the dancing. So we were like, Greg was like, try to do it. And I was like, uh-uh. And then finally happened in our last residency when we had everybody uh, and, and, and pushed that to, to the stage. 
Thank you for that. I, I was hoping you would talk about that, that section specifically because I think some of that vocabulary might be unfamiliar or it might look familiar, but like it's hard to name for some folks. So thanks for uh, speaking specifically to that. And Greg, what about the multiple music influences that come into to a show like this and, and music from the soul's repertoire in general? Yeah, um, I think also as we were, we were speaking yesterday that, you know, Using the Brazilian aspect is a is a good like touch point for an audience because some you know it's easy to give people a little succinct thing of what what they'll see, you know it's it's Brazilian tap even though Leo Leo's always saying like there's no such thing as Brazilian tap we're like Brazilian dancers that study an American art form which is tap you know and bring our own thing to it, but um so yeah there's Brazilian elements but really it's just a conglomeration of everybody's personality. Um, like the, that finale, oh, ba, oh, ba, Leo wrote that melody, and we just fleshed it out with chords and arrangement and stuff. Um, Jose, who's not here, who was replaced by Mahela, who's playing flute up here, she's filling in for somebody no, named Jose. They're both Cuban, so he kind of, the, the, the Arisha thing, I think, started with him. We were just playing a percussive pattern, and he started chanting over it, and just kind of goofing. Well, not goofing around, but he was just jamming, improvising. And so that kind of came in just from his personality and his, his life. Um, my influences are, you know, hip-hop, rock, psychedelic, a little bit of jazz. Jenny has some, like, chamber ensemble experience. Noe is, a, is like a concert pianist and also sings in church and sings, like, Renaissance-style music. So you can hear, you know, obviously those vocal harmonies, he, we let him take the lead on directing those harmonies, like, you know, and getting that sound. So it's really just a um, conglomeration of everybody's, of all the, the personnel. So rich. It is so rich. And when I feel like when we hear those, you name those things, we can start to find them in it, though never quite because they're mixed with, you know, other ideas. And um, so, Leo, I have a question for you. We had a conversation a few weeks ago, and you mentioned that the inspiration for I Didn't Come to Stay was a desire for celebration and togetherness. And so I'm wondering if you can talk about where that idea came from and how it's playing out for you all now that you're actually like doing the show. Yeah, um, because of the, I, I say that this piece is a pandemic piece because it was created throughout two years of pandemic. We had like two years of residency to make it happen. and. The piece is the process, right? Like um, whatever we write about it, those are inspirations. But actually, what you see on the stage is like what our day by day in, into the studio. Um, and it was clear from the first residency in 2020 to the, our last residency um, this year, like this, no, yeah, this, this January, that we were eager to just be together, like to just party together in a sense. Um, uh, there was a lot of FOMO during those residencies. Like, if there was one person awake, everybody would be awake also to just hang out, you know? Uh, and I feel like that translates a lot on the stage, like this eager of being together. and and Because and, we had to test. We have to be in bubble residencies. We, we hopped to so many hoops to be in those, to get together, that when we were together, it was like such an ecstasy. Um, I, I was missing, especially, specifically, I was missing Carnival. I've been missing Carnival for nine years because I haven't been back in Brazil for Carnival for nine years. Uh, and that also screamed a lot with this eager of celebration, eager of celebrate celebration. So I, I feel like we're just celebration party, celebration, celebrating being together, being friends, hanging out. Greg, what, is it, what does the party feel like when you're performing? Uh, what does the party feel like? For, well, for me, I I tr I kind of try to keep one eye on the road because I I'm I'm giving Mahela cues because she's new and I'm you know I sometimes I get a little lost in the ecstasy and so, something goes wrong so I'm I'm trying to learn my my own personal skill of like to like get lost in it but also keep an eye on on what's going on so it doesn't I'm not I don't get like to totally lost in it right now but also the show is still kind kind of new for us so yeah. So I'm going to open it up to you all. Does anyone have a question for Greg or Leo or both? Yes. 
So that was that was a comment noting the the combination of the tap dance and the Afro Brazilian dance and and anticipating some capoeira. Do you have any comments? I'll, I'll I'll practice some. It's a very very hard art form, one must say. But yeah, I'll try. Maybe in the next creation. Other questions? Yes. Great. So where did the title of the piece come from? I didn't come to stay and. Is it difficult to find dancers with such a range of movement vocabulary? The title of the piece comes from a Maya Angelou book. Um, it's the opening title, actually. Um, kind of defines um, someone trying to find your own sense of culture and identity when you are an immigrant, kind of, or if you are displaced. Um, I believe, like in the beginning of the book, she, the character is moving from one place to another, and she opens the book with that phrase, kind of, and she suffered a lot in that place that she got, so she, it's just thinking about those things, like, I didn't come to stay here, but all those things are happening to me, and I'm here. Uh, that reflected a lot with us with, within, within the, our process. Um, me stuck here in America during the pandemic because I couldn't leave back to Brazil because I was working here. If I left, I would be stuck in Brazil. A bunch of dancers, a bunch, actually three dancers from the company, the other three Brazilians, had to leave because of family problems and personal problems. They had to leave to Brazil, and they got stuck for there like for seven months. Uh, most of their residency time with us was kind of a virtual. Uh, so yeah, it, it's it's multi-layer the relationship with the name and like the state of the company and and everybody around. Um, what was the second question? The, the <laughs> um, I, I, I tend to work with the people that I know, um, obviously, to bring tap dancers who can have a Brazilian vocabulary in Brazilian dance, it would be much easier to find Brazilian tap dancers. So yeah, there's four of us in the, in the group. Um, but also the tap dance community is really tight and really well connected and we know everybody. So it's really easy to know when there is a new dancer coming around or like a new younger dancer, you know, standing out. We all know, we all know who this person is and it's easy to pick and bring it to the company. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm also gonna ask you, Greg, about the musicians. Like, how do you, how have you all come to know one another and to work so, so closely together? Sure, yeah, I think the, the music is based around the personalities, like I was saying, so if it had been a different band, it would definitely be a different piece. Um, <laughs> Jennifer, the bassist, was, I guess she, was filling in or something. I don't know how she got in the fold, but then I realized that she was a much more proficient upright bassist than I am. And I was like, great, I don't, I don't have to do that anymore. Like, <laughs> someone here can do it just better. So, so I get to learn, there she is right there. Huh? Foot percussion thing. The foot percussion. That's why you started playing with Leo. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Yeah, we were both were playing upright bass with foot percussion. And then the fact that she played cello also was like, oh, we have a whole other palette without hiring another person. So and then you can start arranging for upright bass and cello. And then I don't have to play upright, so I was able to kind of incorporate guitar in, which I've been playing bass for my professional career mostly for the last 10 years, but it's really been really nice to like bring the guitar back in because I actually started with guitar when I was little. Um, and uh, Josh, m we met at... Tap City, right? And I knew right then, I was like, that's, that's the guy. And I stayed on top of him, I hounded him, I just kept bringing him back into everything. Um, Noe is, is Leo's husband, our pianist is, and also our company manager. So he has like more classical skills and he can sight read. So some of the pieces that, that some of the parts that he has are really made to, to try and showcase like what, what he can do. Jennifer has spent a lot of time training in Cuba so she really has like the Cuban music down like in, in her bones. Um, and obviously Mihaela's Cuban and an amazing improvisationalist. So just making, really making the pieces around the people. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, one la we'll take one last question. 
question. So the, the, she, you named that you're an African-American woman who danced in an Afro-Brazilian group and that the combination of these experiences kind of coming together helped you, you connect across those, those genres. And so then the question is a similar question to you all about how you make those connections from sort of the, across the diaspora the diaspora from the Afro-Brazilian to the African-American practices? Um, yeah, I, I, feel, I feel really weird sometimes when, when I have to go teach a class, a tap dance class for American students and I'm the only non-American in the room because it's an American art form. Um, how do I break that barrier? Um, I guess I can speak into like from watching other dancers uh, specifically, I will name those two dancers, Michelle Dorans and Nicholas Van Young, who are choreographers from Dorans Dance and work really closely with us. Both of them, even being American, have a very, very big, deep Brazilian pocket. And I see their influences, even without them saying, like just on the way that they use rhythms and, and create choreography, that there are many Brazilian rhythms already within that. So if we can do it that way, could feel comfortable to going in the other direction. Um, but the uncomfort uncomfortable way is, is always there. Like I'm always with this in the back of my mind. And that's why I always say like when, when some, some press come out and say, oh, the Brazilian tap dance or, or, or they are doing Brazilian tap dance, it's not fair, you know what I mean? Uh, it might be Brazilian music played by an American instrument, but it's still an American art form. My take on that, I think it's a good question because we, we have talked about this before too. I'm coming from the other side where like, I'm African American, but obviously you could just connect with all these things instantly, right? You hear Brazil or reggae, whatever, you know? Music from Angola, you, you get it, right? But then you're also like, well, just because I get it, does that mean I should perform it? Because you're kind of like, you know, it's like, you can get away with a little bit more. We, we used to have discussions like, we could probably do whatever we want just because of the way we appear you know, people won't be like, oh, you're appropriating. So there's like this, there's this balance in there somewhere of like, it's like, you're my cousin and I like it, so you can do it, but I didn't actually grow up in it. So like kind of where I stand is like, A, you have the people who have actually studied it, do it. You know what I mean? Like, or you have the people who grew up in it, do it. Like Mahela's Cuban, go for it. Jennifer studied in Cuba, she's not Cuban, go for it. And then I feel like the third route for me is like, you really like it, just make it your own because people have been doing that forever. Like reggae made its way to Brazil, and then there's like Brazilian reggae, and it's awesome. Nobody says like, you're not doing it right, you're not from Jamaica, you know what I mean? So you just take it and like twist it and make, you know, keep, keep it, keep it uh, authentic, authentically you, you know? Thank, thank you so much, we're gonna, we're gonna pause right there. Thank you so much, that was an incredible question to end on, thank you both. I, I'm, I've been really lucky. I've been watching this show since Tuesday, and I'll be back. Um, thank you so much for all of your incredible work to you and the other performers. Really wonderful show. Enjoy your week. Thanks, Janet. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for coming. coming. Yeah.